What's up, friends? All right, we are back again covering our Blazor WebAssembly application with an API in the background and, of course, the front end. Now, we haven't done anything with the front end yet, but we are going to continue working on our API. And so today, what we're going to do is add some entities. And as I did last time was we added something called Entity Framework. Uh, and you can check that out here in the API by going right-click and saying Manage NuGet Packages. And what we should see here is in our installed, we should see, uh, there we go, we've got Entity Framework Core SQL Server, and we've got Entity Framework Core Tools. And those two things are gonna allow us to create our entities and build our database with our code first migrations. So I'm gonna close that up because we already have our database connection. And of course, we already got our default connection thing here. I'm gonna keep the program open though. So if you don't have that open, definitely go to API and find your program class. There it is. And then because I haven't really decided what exactly I want to do with this, I'm just going to stick with what I did before, which is the home furnishings. But I'm going to go ahead and delete these two from last time, and we're going to remake them for anyone who is just joining us. So with that, I've got a folder here that I called entities. And if you need to, just go ahead and right click on your project and say add, and then new folder. And that's going to give you a folder that you're going to call entities. And the entities are going to be our objects that we're going to be basically inserting into our database. So for here, because I called it home furnishings, I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to say I want a new class. I'm going to call this class a room. So I've got many rooms in my house. I'm going to call it room.cs. There we go. And then I'm also going to make another class that I'm going to call furniture. So I'm going to say add and then class. And then in this case, furniture. There we go. And so now I've got two entities here in my solution explorer, right in my entities uh, folder. And so now what I want to do is I want to say what these entities can contain. So I'm going to start with the room thing, basically. Um, everything in entity framework needs to have some sort of an ID, a unique ID that it can be used to access from the or within the database from the API. So we're going to start with that. We're going to say public int and ID get set. And then we're also gonna say, let's see, we're gonna call this, uh, we're just gonna say public string name. Uh, and if you're wondering why mine is populating so quickly like that, it's because I have an extension installed called ReSharper. It is, I think I mentioned this maybe in the very beginning, first video, it is not free, but if you are a student, it is free. So I recommend definitely getting that student discount by using your university email address to sign up on the JetBrains website. So anyways, my room has an ID and it has a name and I guess we'll give it a description too. Might as well, so that we just can say like where it's at. Um, and that should be good enough for now. We can always add more later on. Now this is where the tricky part comes in. With furniture, I want to say furniture is going to go into a room, right? And that's kind of where you need to think about like how your entities are going to be laid out, how they're going to work. Think about how your entities relate to one another, because this of course is going to be using SQL Server, which is a relational database. So the idea is that everything within the database's tables relate to one another in one way or another. So this is of course going to get its own ID so that I can access each piece of furniture by ID. And it's going to get its own name as well. And then I'll give it a description too. But here's where it gets tricky now. Um, I want furniture to go into a room. And so I need to basically connect furniture with a room. I need to be able to do that. And in order to do that, I'm basically going to have each piece of furniture have a connection to a room entity through what we call a foreign key. So I'm going to enter down and I'm going to say foreign key. There we go. And I'm going to call it room ID. There we go. And then up here, I'm going to add another ID. This is going to be a public int. And then I'm going to call this room ID. And that's going to be a get and set. And so essentially what this is doing, this foreign key thing here is saying that whatever I'm going to put underneath this line, I want you to connect it to that entity via this number here or this property. All right, so let me give you an example by typing this out. I'm going to say public and I'm going to say room because that's what I've got and I'm going to call it room and it's going to get a get and set. All right, so let's kind of figure draw this out a little bit. Let's say I have a room here with an ID of one 
and it has a name of living room and its description is the living room. All right. And now let's say I want to put a couch in that living room. So the couch can have an ID of whatever, but it's going to have a room ID of one because I said that's what the living room's ID is going to be. And then here is the public room property which essentially links it to the actual room entity. And we're going to see why that's important a little bit later on. But essentially what's going to happen is when I query the database looking for this piece of furniture, it's also going to have this room ID, room ID of one in there. And what I can do is I can use a dot include statement when I'm querying this. And that's going to include the room that ha matches the room ID of one. And so not only will I have access to all of the data here in the furniture, but I'll also have access to all the data in the room that matches this room ID. So again, as I mentioned before, the room name will be uh, living room and its description will be the living room. And so in this furniture thing, when I pull it from the database, not only will I get all the information for the furniture, but I'll also be able to access all the information for the room specifically. And this will come in handy in our front end when we're trying to display data to the user so that they can kind of see and understand what's going on uh, as far as like, uh, if, if you want to display maybe like, hey, this piece of furniture is in this particular room, you can post the room name on the web page or on the page for the user to see. So they can see where they're at as they navigate around your website. So anyway, so we'll see a little bit more about that later on. But what I want to do now is I want to tell my home furnishings DB context class, the home furnishings context in this case, that's uh, deriving from the DB context class, I should say, we want to tell it about these sets that we're going to be putting into our database. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say down here, and this is of course underneath the constructor, we're going to say DB sets. And this is something that we get from entity framework. And I'm going to say a room object, and I'm going to call this rooms. And then I'm also going to say I've got another DB set, and this one is going to be furniture. And this will also be called, I guess we'll just call it furnitures, which seems kind of silly, but I'm going to go with it anyways. Um, you could obviously just say furniture, but sometimes it's easier to just do it like that, give it a, a plurality, because if you name it furniture, and you're, it's a database full of furniture. Obviously, I know in English, it makes sense to us by saying furniture can refer to multiple furniture uh, items. But when we're talking about here, sometimes it can get confusing when we're building our program. And so now with that taken care of, we basically have our program almost ready to go. I'm going to do one more thing, though. What I want to do is I want to go into the program class and make sure that all of this is all set correctly. So I have the add DB context, home furnishings context, options, of course, use SQL server, builder.configuration, get all that stuff. Okay, then I think we should be good. We don't have to worry about any of these things right now because we're going to get to those a little bit later on. But what we can do actually is at this point, we should be able to build our database. So let me see if I remember how to do all this stuff because, you know, sometimes things just like, you know, you forget stuff. Um, let's see here. I'm actually going to go to the PowerShell because um, I like using it from there. And where are we at right now? Uh, oh, I want to go to the API. So again, if you aren't in the PowerShell or you can't see the PowerShell, it should be up here in window, I believe, or maybe it's view. Uh, let's see. I just want to point it out to you so that you can find it pretty easily. Oh, terminal. There it is. So you can actually just hit terminal or you can do a control, uh, the tilde thing or whatever to bring it back up. And that brings it up. That's the, that's the little squiggly that's above the uh, tab key on your left hand side, just below escape. So if you do control that, it'll bring it right back up. Just like I just did right there. So anyways, I want to be in the API here. And I'm going to say, what's the command again? It is dot net. Uh, I can do a dot net build. I can do that to start off and make sure that everything is building. Okay, there we go. So I've got build succeeded. That's cool. Um, all right. And so now what I want to do is I want to actually migrate and make my database. And so in order to do that, I'm going to actually, let's see here. I'm going to say dot net. 
Okay, so I did a real quick double check and make sure that I've got these correct. Uh, there's so many commands to remember. I mostly just have it all written down. So if you're one of those people who hasn't memorized all these things, that's totally okay. Don't don't stress about it. But I'm going to go ahead and say .NET EF for Entity Framework. And we're going to say Migrations Add. And then we usually call it Initial Create whenever we do this. And then I'm going to actually add in a tag that says O. Oh, and I want to put it in a folder called data slash migrations just to keep everything separate. And that's actually going to go up right here. I've got data or data, and it's going to make a folder here called migrations, and it's going to put the migrations right in there. So if I hit enter, that should do this. And we're going to see if it doesn't work, because of course, that's something that can happen but oh look in this case it did work which is kind of cool and then I can just do dot net EF let me move that other way dot net EF database update and if I update the database then what I should be able to do is explore the database afterwards and check on your terminal here we've got a whole bunch of green infos that's always good whenever i see green infos that makes me happy so first let's explore this here i've got a migrations that has been added or built here and here is my migration and this migration essentially tells me how to create the table based off of rooms and the furniture parameters that I put into my DB context. And you may be asking yourself, what is in fact a migration? And the migration is essentially um, when you build your application and then you deploy it at some point, you're not going to deploy it with a database already built. You're going to deploy the application just as is. But that application, of course, has to be able to build a database to store things in it when users start interacting with it. And that's what the migrations are. The migrations essentially run whenever the uh, program runs for the very first time and it builds the database brand new for you. And then you are able to store things into that database uh, from that point on. And so it's kind of a cool thing. It basically makes it so that like if you were to take this application and export it as like an exe file and then give it to somebody else, provided they had SQL Server running on their computer, they could run that application and it would build the database exactly as you're using it here in development, which is kind of a neat feature of Entity Framework. Uh, so anyways, now that I've got that, what I can do is over here in SQL Server Object Explorer, uh, and which, by the way, if you don't see that, you should be able to see it by going to view and it should be in one of these things. I think it might be in other windows. Uh, let's see, SQL Server or maybe Object Explorer, Data Tools Operations, Data Sources maybe. Uh, let me see, it's around here somewhere. Oh, maybe Object Browser? Oh, there we go, duh, SQL Server Object Explorer. It's like literally right there. So again, that's view and then the SQL Server Object Explorer, or just Control backslash and Control S. Uh, so anyways, what you'll be seeing here is all the SQL servers that you've got on your computer. Uh, if you have multiple ones, it's cool. If you're just seeing what I've got, that's cool too. Again, you can just hit this refresh if you're not seeing the same things. Um, my computer is listed right here. That's this, I'm Lawrence. And then we're gonna click on this first arrow here in the top one, and then we're gonna go to Databases. And then this is, what do we call this? Home furnishing. So you should see home furnishings right there. And then we should see tables right there. And there we go, I've got two tables. I've got a rooms table. So if I right click on that and say view data, there shouldn't be anything in there just yet, uh, but I do have an empty database. So that's kind of cool, I guess, to start off. And then likewise, I can do the same thing with furnitures. I should have a view data and again, an empty database. So that's neat um, right now. I don't really have much else going on as far as that. Uh, the database is pretty empty. So what I want to do is actually start to insert things into the database. Um, oh, actually, hold on one second. Let me do this real quick. Uh, let's see. I think I might need to do this. Dot net build. Let me do that. It's going to build it. Okay, that's cool. And then let me do this again and refresh just to make sure that it actually is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So let's see, tables and furnitures and view data. Okay, I don't know why it's being all weird like that. Oh, there we go. That makes more sense. Okay, so that's what you should hopefully be seeing. 
uh, in yours. That's it. That's what we're looking for. All right. So if you didn't see that initially, then we may have missed a step or you may have needed to do that one step. So again, if you weren't sure, you can go .NET and then build. And then that will build your application and that will run your migration. And then you should be seeing the tables show up in your database. So let me go back to rooms real quick and go to view data. And that should show me again. I don't know why mine is being kind of weird like this, but yours shouldn't be, or at least hopefully it's not. Uh, there we go. So you should see tables like this or rows like this. And the first one should just say no. And there should be, yep. And there should be like labels for them as well. So mine is being kind of weird. Um, it may need a restart, which is fine. Um, but anyway, so that's that. We've got our tables ready to go. And now the best part, we need to populate them with some information. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So until then, uh, hope you're having a good time. Hope you're learning a lot of stuff. And if not, that's cool too. Leave me a comment either way. I'm always looking for some constructive criticisms and feedbacks and discourse in the comments, whatever the case is. So anyways, I will see you in the next video when we start to seed our database with data.